I like surprises, and I very much like good surprises. This is Elk Mountain, Wyoming by Elk Mountain Modding, and it's pretty special. Hello everybody, it's the Farm Sim Guy here, hope you're all doing well. This is the view you get when you first open Elk Mountain by Elk Mountain Modding. It is absolutely gorgeous. Now, I have to admit, I knew this was happening as a map, but I hadn't been paying masses of attention to it. Check, this, check the Facebook page every now and again, saw the odd image, but I tell you what, when I opened this and had a look around it, oh my goodness, blown away. He has done a phenomenal job, so hats off to you CJ. Really excited to bring you guys an early preview of this. It is in testing at the moment. He shared it with a few close people uh, to get uh, some feedback on, but hopefully we'll be seeing this going live soon. So, like I said, this is where you start when you spawn on the map for the very first time. You are at the top, or very close to the top, of Elk Mountain. Uh, the truck's up here, so you can get your way, way back down, which is good. But if we just climb up to the summit here, and have a little look over the entire map. This is a 4x map, this is a 4 times map, which basically means you could fit 4 Elm Creeks on this, if you uh, want to think about it like that. Lots and lots of trees and mountains, but over there, that isn't the render distance letting you down, they are the plains. Now they are completely untapped territory, you could cut your own fields out of them. You could do whatever you want with those. We'll have a look at that in the minute in the PDA. Now, if we look over here a little bit, uh, lovely river through here, a town down there. There are five farms on the map. Uh, there's the main farm that you start on right there in the middle of the map at the moment. And then up over there behind the trees and into the hills, we've got mining as well. Thanks to uh, RGC, the realistic gaming crew who've been helping him set this up. And, uh, I tell you, this map has everything. I am impressed beyond words. This is so good. So, what we'll do, we'll do our obligatory tour of the map. We'll uh, try and bounce around as much as we can. It is a 4X, so it's going to take us a little bit of time to get around it. Uh, but let's jump into it. Right, looking at this very unique and, and rather nice PDA, which I like, um, you can see that he's built in the contours for the map in here. So you can see where the steep... Uh, mountain sides are you can see where the flatter valleys are and the plains where you can uh, cut your own farms or fields so I like that it's a nice touch nice to see a different approach to a PDA I have to say I do like that you've got Elk River running right through the middle of the map here and you've also got North Fork which appears to be uh, another river that's running down from Elk River at the top you've got uh, a couple of lakes up here you've got Bighorn Lake up here and hatchet lake up here uh, up in the top corner like i said is the bighorn mine so we'll go and have a look at that but also down in the bottom here we've got the gravel pit as well which we can again go and have a look at we're going to tour the entire map it does have a train on it you can just see it moving onto the map here basically a cell point a mobile cell point but you can load and unload things into that so we'll have a look at that as well great sawmill setup as well obviously i think this is a mix of forestry if you want it to be forestry i mean trust me there's enough land that you never need to touch the trees if you don't want to but if forestry is your thing and you want to have a go at that this is a perfect map for that and as you can see there to start off with you have got just 10 fields but that does not mean that you're limited to those 10 fields you have got so much ground around here to work with so that's great now cj did tell me this is this is fictional this is something he's come up with in his head but obviously based around 
Wyoming and and the area that he comes from. So he's uh, he's put his own spin on it, which is really nice to see. Um, the roads, the road network. You can see these roads: the blue road, the yellow road is the main road. There, you've got blue roads down the bottom. These white gravel roads as well, uh, looping around the map. So access to everything is pretty good. Uh, and again, we will go and have a look at that. This is the main farm that you start on. I'm going to just show you. This is the land you get in new farmer mode. Just here, I've bought this. Uh, just so I could show you one of the other farms, but there are four other farms on the map We'll try and go and see all of those you basically have to buy the land before the doors open in the buildings So we'll go and check some of those out as well, but uh, we'll have a tour around the farm uh, some fantastic uh, Atmospheric work he's done I think with the landscaping and uh, With the way he set the map up that makes it feel it really feels like a lived-in map and you know um, my views on uh, maps that feel real maps that feel authentic and and he's really managed to do that with this map so we'll go and check that out as well okay let's start at the starter farm and give you a little tour of that now if you know cj's work already you will know he's great on detail so uh this farmhouse is one of the nicest i've seen i always i always love it when i see one of these on the map uh, really really nice you've got your sleep point here you've also got your wardrobe point in there which is great um, but lots of detail just really really nice now look at this when you walk out of the front door look at that view isn't that stunning absolutely gorgeous so uh, looking to our left here we've got the matching garage for the farm and up over there in the background you have got the hills climbing up behind you uh, over here We've got a greenhouse and a little lean-to shed. We've got our wood cell point as well, the little wood burner. Um, again, all from the Elk Mountain pack that he released earlier on, uh, which I am a big fan of and use quite regularly. But this view, I mean, it just... I've not got tired of it yet, and I've been uh, looking around this map for a good few hours now. Um, but down here is the main farmyard, so we will head down there and we'll take a look at that. So here we go. As you arrive at the farmyard, you have got your horse corral, if you want to call it that. Um, but they can stay there. You've got your horse box set up. I love the fact he's gone to the, to the effort of making all the machinery dirty as well. Not new and shiny and polished. So that's really, really nice. He's got the workshop there, again, which you'll recognise from the pack. A couple of bins there for your crops. Uh, more sheds over here and the cow shed over here um, again nice truck and trailer there so you can haul things about but just again looking in the background at the mountains and the hills going around it it's it's just the the way he landscaped this is really really special a lot of time and effort has gone into this it feels fantastic so um, there you go main farm now, what you get with the main farm in terms of fields is absolutely nothing. Um, so you're going to have to make an effort to go and find out uh, whether or not you've got enough money to buy some of these fields. Now, uh, looking at the way the map is split up, field four there, $93,000. Field three, a round field, 82000 nearly 83000 the biggest field uh, that you get on the map at the start, two hundred and thirty-nine thousand. So they're not, they're not offensive. The prices you can you can certainly have enough to get yourself started. Um, there are only ten fields, like I said, but maybe you want to go up here and buy this chunk of land. Probably not that one because it's uh, off into the hills and into the mountains. But maybe this one down here, as you can see, uh, quite a nice shaped uh, piece of land and quite large, two hundred sixty thousand. Again, these chunks of the high plains down here. There you go, 942, so getting quite pricey, that one. Um, again here, 12,000 for this one. This is relatively cheap, but the reason for that is if you look at the contours, you can see that a lot of that is mountainous and not much use. You've probably only got that corner of it there that's useful. Um, again, lots and lots of different shapes and sizes. You can own the entire map if you want. Whether it will be useful to you, all depends on if you're logging or you're uh, farming. So um, just something for everybody and, and not your standard, I guess, way of buying land. You know, even even something like Yukon Valley, 
you know you can buy big plots of land but majority flat this is this is up and down all over the map there is i don't think there's really anywhere that's super super flat on this map even the flat plains are are contoured in some way so definitely uh Definitely there's something, I mean, I've been clicking around here going, what would I buy? And I still haven't made a decision. Uh, there's some really kind of nice, unique shapes. Look at that, both sides of the river, something like that as well, 182,000. So tons and tons of options to choose from. But rather than just stay here and look at this farm, I think probably the best thing to do here is, is take a run down the main road um, from this side uh, over to the right-hand side. Um, and then we'll probably do a little bit of a tour up of the top and then a drive around the plains and the farmlands at the bottom and give you an idea for what is what because there's a lot to take in here. So as we pull away here, yeah, onto the right side of the road, you can see these these grey poles at the side of the road which are uh, there to keep you on the straight and narrow but uh, they are collisions so just be careful with those. Over here we have got a couple of buildings just uh, clean open space that you could purchase if you wanted to um, look at the detail on the road nice and dirty scruffy roads nice to see again some flatland here with some hills behind a rickety old shed there now we will come back and we will head up that road later on but up there what you can see is the cereal factory and the mill so uh, productions on this map as well which is great to see now you saw that elk sign as well there. Um, and there are 12 collectible antler horns on this map. So uh, well worth uh, trying to find those as well. And they can be identified by the bugle call that goes off when you are close to them. So that's quite good fun. Looking forward to that. Um, let's just pull along here and let's pull into here because here is one of the farms. So... I just stop here for a second um, because there's something that's worth looking into with these is that CJ thought that the uh, the elk mountain buildings were very nice but very frustrating that they didn't have any interiors or uh, working doors on them so he has taken the liberty of editing these and giving them interiors and uh, and working doors so let's have a look at those now now before we go too far let me just demonstrate that the door is not working. There is no door working there. And that is because we don't own the land. So what we'll do, we will quickly drop into here. We will purchase said land. And then we go and have a look at what he's done inside. There we go. Doors open now. So these new interiors have been put in by him, which is great to see. Look at that. Nice tools. Something elk uh, mountain. Uh, and CJ are renowned for is his attention to detail lots and lots of things lying about it feels feels lived in feels like somebody for somebody belongs here and, and works here or lives here it's great we'll go down here um, we'll pop the bottom open as well because this works so again kind of old-fashioned storage in there and again over here more storage more bits and pieces in there, lots and lots of uh, tools and a workbench and things like that. So, uh, lovely stuff. So there you go, farm number one. If you like this, again, it's got uh, actually legitimate fields behind it. So field eight here. Um, so if you don't want to cut your own fields, this may be the farm for you. But look, just look at the detail. Look at the landscaping. That's as good as I've seen yet in FS22, it really is. It really, really is. Okay, let's head back out of here and look across the other side of the road. Now I'm going to leave the truck there for a second. Uh, we are just going to quickly nip across the road because I think this might be one of my favourite parts of the map already. Uh, the old uh, gas station here. Look at this. Really, really nicely done. And again, the old rusty vehicles lying in the yard. Just so much character, right? so much going on that makes it feel really really authentic a um, couple of uh, grain silos behind here as well i do believe they are in fact uh, just placeables but nice to see and a couple of trailers 
Got our trailer houses there. Uh, mailbox there as well. So, I mean, just there's so much stuff to look at. It's just like an assault on the senses. You're just looking around the whole time, spotting stuff. It's really, really nice. Really nice. Okay. Uh, we're going to run into the main town now and have a look at that. And one last thing before we jump into the truck and head into the town. Once you have bought the farms, you can remove these. So there you go. Take down sign. Click and it's gone. You own the farm now. Again, just a really nice little touch. Right, let's do a U-turn and uh, head back to the road. So we'll just head along the road now. I mean, look at this. This bridge model, really nice over the river here. Nicely done. Again, more buildings here. Speed limit's dropped, so we need to be careful. But in there, that is the animal uh, buy point. That is the animal buy point there. Let's just pull inside. Quickly have a scan look at it. But if you want to ship your animals direct from here to your farm, this is where you would purchase them. So that's kind of nice to see. A couple of buildings there as well. And tons of landscaping. Just the amount of landscaping is ridiculous. So back to the stop sign. We'll wait for this car to go past. Solar powered traffic lights there as well. Maybe when there's a busy day. But again, over the road there, look, again, more land, you could purchase some of this. There's a lot of logs up there as well, we'll run up there in a little while. In fact, that is the uh, entrance to the uh, sawmill, so we'll go and have a look at that. But there we go, into the town, and now look at this town. Yes, it's using some of the base game models, but also some of CJ's uh, own models in here as well. And look at this. I mean, how good does this look? Traffic lights are up there as well. Um just lots and lots going on really nice to see there's the shop as well so if you want to buy anything from the tractor supply coat that's where it is you've got KFC's here you've got the US postal store just here and there you go you've got the bakery and things like that as well so there are productions here as well quite a lot of productions here uh, I should add not just the odd one um, We'll just quickly have a look and see what you've got here. There's the diner, which is another one we know. So let's just pull in here. So in terms of productions in the town, you have got the spinnery, you have got the dairy, uh, the bakery, the tailor shop, uh, the fast food restaurant as a sell point, of course, uh, carpentry, uh, the sugar mill, uh, and then the local market, the pawn shop, the farmer's market, and you can buy your seed, fertilizer, and lime here, as well as fuel. And like I mentioned before, uh, the shop where you can pick up your machinery. So, very nice. They've also left a couple of plots here. So you can add to the town if you so like. And I have just crashed into a vehicle. So be careful of that. The traffic is quite busy on this main road. But yes, a couple of extra um, spots there where you could drop in some additional productions, should you wish. And then just houses and detail along the roads as you go. A little bit of a, a substation there. And there's the sign for the town. So we'll keep heading along here. I said I would run the full length of this um, before we went and nosied about. But again, more detail buildings lying around, loads of signage, loads of uh, um, poles with wires on, not sure if they're electric or telegraph, um, but in here we'll just quickly whip ourselves in here as well, this is one of the big grain cell points. Now as well as uh, that being a grain unload point you can buy seed and fertilizer here as well, and over here is your bale cell point. We buy hay. There you go. Just to make it abundantly clear. Now over the road there you can see another for sale sign. Which takes you to one of the other farms. So we'll quickly go and have a look at that. If we can find a gap in the traffic. Again over the road there you can see some of the pre-cut fields. So again if you want to start on a farm with things a little bit more established. This could well be 
the place for you. There we go. Much more compact farm this. Uh, just a couple of buildings just here. And a silo, but let's just stop. Have a little look around. See what's what we don't on this land, so these doors won't open just now. Um, but certainly there's enough here to get you started. You may need to expand a little bit further and add a few more sheds if you're going for a big operation, but uh, that's entirely up to you, isn't it? But um, just walking around, I just can't get over the detail and the quality of the landscaping. Really is uh, really standing out, really standing out now. I'm going to wander over here a little bit because there's quite a nice little view down to the river. Again, really well thought through. Look at that. Just a nice stroll through the garden of the house down to take a look across the river there. Look at that. Fantastic stuff. Now we have had a few queries from people when I've done map tours before who want to know things like does course play work with the fields and things like that. So uh, just as a little example, uh, I've got ourselves a new Holland here and we are just going to drop it into this field just to check that uh, the field boundaries are set up and it's picking those up as you would expect. There we are in the CR10. We are going to very quickly create a job. Course play field work. And we'll just stick it in here like this. It's picked up the boundary for the field straight away, which is great. Um, so we will open the course generator, stick a couple of headlands on, generate a field work course. That is looking good to me. Close that. It's even picked out the uh, island in the field there, which is good. Start job. We are running nicely on course play. No issues there at all. So we will uh, probably just let him run now and we'll jump back in and keep touring the map. Right, back out onto the road now. There we go. We will head on a little bit further. We are, just for reference, we'll stop as we get to the bridge here. Let's jump into the map just for a second for reference. We're just past probably the middle of the map, so you get an idea for how long we've driven for already. And we're going to follow this road all the way up to here, and then we'll take the high road round the top. But over the river here. Again, really nicely detailed. And we're heading towards some of the more open ground. This has been quite uh, uh, changing and uh, kind of up and down. Actually, I must stop and go here because this is, again, another yard, another animal yard if you want to purchase animals. This is the big livestock yard down here. So head down here, check this out because it is uh, really nicely done. There you go, lots of space to turn around. Again, Lots of detail, which is nice. Another hay cell point as well. Always nice to see. And it does join off to some of the uh, other roads as well. So you can see here, um, we've got a road that's running off down here. This joins up one of the big loops around the map. So again, you don't have to uh, always take the same route. There's lots of different routes around depending on where you want to go, which is nice to see. But a lovely big stockyard there. Very nicely done with a beautiful backdrop as well. But again, you can see there's some flat land behind it as well. So you can purchase that if you want. Now we're going to head up here. As you could see the roads were starting to undulate quite a lot. Back to the main road, back to the tarmac road. Let's turn onto this. Hope we don't bump into anybody else. But as you can see, we run up here. A little bit of a climb. Look at the mountains in the background there. Beautiful some big productions on the horizon there whatever they are we'll soon find out but look at that turn in the road and the valley dropping away below us with the river in it beautifully beautifully modeled so up over the over the crest here probably at 
one of the high points for the current map. Now if I stop here just for a second, we'll just jump to the PDA here. Like I said, there are other options to get you to different areas of the map. You don't have to follow the route every time. So that drops you down into this road down here. Now there are a couple of interesting sections here and here, which I'll uh, maybe have a look at when we drive back down this road. Um, but nicely fenced off areas, which uh, could work incredibly well for cattle. So let's just keep going along here until we get to the end of the main road but uh, again we're dropping down the other side so we've gone over the kind of peak of the hill here we're going down the other side now and just ahead of us ignoring the big uh, grain silo there is another one of our farms so let's just pull in here and have a look at this and there is what I was talking about just a second ago We've got nice cattle gridded areas and fenced off kind of plains really. They're not uh, classed as fields, they certainly don't have field numbers, but they're set up for cattle I think. Or if you want to cut them into, into arable land, you could do that as well. But we're here, we'll quickly have a look at this farm as well. Um, you'll start to see similar setups to what you've seen before. Subtle differences, which are nice. Uh, closed gates on this one, which will just pop open if we can. Yes, they will allow us to do that. So your farmhouse there, and a few outbuildings, and a silo to store some stuff in. Uh, doors are open on this one, because I've already had a little bit of a nosy around here, but you will uh, see slightly different setup from last time. Less landscaping, a bit more usable space in here. Uh, but, as you would expect, very similar to what you had before, with a bin there for your crops as well. Okay, nicely done. Let's keep a driving, because we've got a lot to cover still. Right, we'll reverse out to the main road here. We are very nearly at the end of the map, so we can then start going exploring elsewhere, but we'll head up here. There is your main, or certainly one of your main, uh, cooperative cell points. You'll recognise that from Elm Creek. And if we keep running around the side of that, the road starts climbing again. There you go. Now I'm going to stop just here because I do think we are coming to the edge of the map. So yes, as I suspected, we are right on the edge of the map here. So we are going to hang a left here and we are going to head up into the hills and check out some of these spaces up here. There we go, slightly more off the beaten track. But again, the beauty of this map does not change. It is still glorious. Over this narrow little bridge, back over the river, look at the rocks and the waterfall there. I mean, just how gorgeous is this? Beautifully done. Okay. We'll just keep going though, we're just going to keep driving for a bit. Now you can see the uh, terrain dropping away pretty rapidly here. As we head over here, and it opens out, you've got some uh, flatland here, again, maybe if you want to start a farm. Just here, there's some pretty substantial spaces here. And Again, down here, as you head towards the river, a nice little space there. And the sign here is for, I do believe, the State Park. There we go. Welcome to McKinley State Park. Area of natural beauty, and he is not wrong. So again, we can run down to here. Let's run down to the bottom, just to have a quick look. There's a small jetty here. So again, maybe after a hard week's farming you can head up here and uh, do a little bit of fishing. Lovely. Just so, so well finished. We'll head on up here a little bit further as you can see. Um, starting to feel a lot more mountainous, less usable space practical usable space. Certainly there are still areas that you could use on small 
uh, fields if you so wished if you want to mix up a bit of logging and uh, small arable but we'll climb up the hill here towards the top of the map again just driving along here we are let me just jump to the main PDA to give you an idea of where we are there we are um, we're just about there so up here I believe is the burn ridge we'll go and have a quick look at that again unmarked roads and this isn't on the PDA so still discovering stuff um, but it could be interesting what is up here So it looks like a little bit of a car park up here, but through here is the Burn Ridge, which explains itself very clearly when you get up here. You see there's clearly been a big forest fire up here. Again, if you want to start doing some role playing, massive opportunities up here. Look at that. Very cool. Heading on a little bit further from the burn ridge here, we come to a junction in the road. Now this one runs you up here to Bighorn Mine, so we're definitely going to take a run up to there. And then we'll head back down to Clear Cut down here. Reverse back slightly. Now you do need, if you want to do the mining on this map, it is not like Yukon Valley at the moment. Uh, it is actually built into the map, so you need Terra Farm, and you need the appropriate equipment for that. If you've not seen Terra Farm or what Terra Farm does, check out my videos on it, and I will also link it in the description for this video as well. But over here, you've got the ability, thanks to the Realistic Gaming crew who have been working with CJ on this map, the ability to take pay dirt or dirt from the ground and turn it into gold with their gold making facilities that you see just here. Now if we drive through where the processing plants are you drive down into this glorious looking mine down here. Now there's your wash plant for your gold as well which you'll see is fed by a little tributary from a stream here and then down in the bottom of here is your mine. Now you can dig any of this wherever you like you can dig uh, but the mine is down there but again with Terra Farm any of this land can be dug up and loaded into the wash plant. Uh, it's an incredibly incredibly clever mod if you haven't like I said if you haven't experienced it definitely worth checking out. Um, so yes a little bit of mining on here as well and it feels very integrated very built in uh, which is great to see. So let's get out of here because honestly this map tour is taking a long time and I know you guys are all very busy. So let's keep going. Okay we're back on the Highland Road here away from the main mine. You can see it's dropping back down towards the river and things are flattening out and a little less in terms of trees but you can see there we go, some of our pre-cut fields are starting to appear again. So we're really into uh, farming territory in the flatlands, look at that. It gives you an idea for the size of some of the fields as well. Now up here is clear cut. There you go, we're just driving through here, I'll let you see some of this really nicely <laughs> laid out land. It's so, so good. We'll run down here. You can see some of the trees have been felled there, maybe storm damage, something like that. Look down here. The lake is down behind those trees somewhere. And we'll just run up here and drop ourselves into what is referred to on the map as clear cut. Possibly uh, forestry related, actually. There you go. That probably makes more sense. This is a cutting ground. Just fantastic, fantastic thinking going into this map. Great to see. Great to see. Now 
Now we're back on the main road, heading back, as you can see here, to where we started. Now, I'm already on 57 minutes recorded. Obviously the vid's going to be shorter than that, because I've stopped and started and uh, looked at a few different things and moved between places, but um, I'm very conscious this is a very <laughs> long video already for a map tour. Um, so what I might do for the second part, because where we're going to go is is down in the second half of the map here. So we are just here. What we'll do, we'll probably just do a little bit of a fly around here because there's not much in terms of things going on down here like there is up in the top half of the map. Uh, lots and lots of um, open planes, uh, which will give you a real idea for the amount of space that there is here to play with. We'll obviously look quickly look at the sawmill and we'll have a look at the gravel pit down here, but I think we've seen the majority of the areas on the map that we have already. We'll probably maybe just pop over to Liberty Peak here for a quick look as well. But um, let's jump out and, and continue the tour. So we've jumped into flight mode here. Um, just give you your bearings. There's the main road. Uh, and we have driven round basically from straight through there all that side of the map has been covered now so we're going to head down here towards the bottom of the map um, just here is the sawmills so we'll quickly have a look at those they're nicely finished large open yards here look, even the detail in the river so good um, but look you can float your uh, wood down the river should you wish and then everything can be lifted out cut up processed however you want it to be done and then you can run the road around here to the train and there is the train just leaving so he disappears back off the map and comes back on in a little while um, but there is another grain sell point there or a load point you can pop your grain in there and load it up onto the train rent the train load it up onto the train and probably get a premium for it selling it off map um we'll head along here along running alongside the train track is this path and then it really opens up then into the high plains which you can see here now there you go high plains have begun and these are just massive expanses of ground for you to do whatever you like with. Like I said, they're not offensively expensive to purchase. They're not cheap, but um, you get a lot of land for your money. A lot of land for your money. So let's just keep going a little bit around here. Give you an idea for them. And again, we'll just jump into the PDA in a second and let you see whereabouts we are on the map but look at the contouring as well it's not flat it's got a lovely shape to it but there we are right in the bottom corner looking back across this huge expanse of open space broken up nicely by tree lines uh, and mountains on this side as well so it doesn't feel too open and expansive but there you go we'll head this way you can see there BGA in front of us. So we'll go and check that out. But again, these rock lines, these breaks in the uh, horizon with these large rocks, road junctions here. There we go. We're almost back into the bottom of the town here, uh, where the BGA is. And there you go, back at the town. So again, we'll just jump to here. That's where we are now. Nice old water tower here, and we can climb up to Liberty Peak, which looks over the town. There you go. Again, just the effort put into these rocks and these mountains. So good. And then over here, there's the main plane that we just saw there before. And then there's plenty more here, plenty more space, a bit more... Uh, tree lined here, so there's clumps of trees you would maybe need to remove, or maybe use those as boundaries for where you where you stop and start your different uh, fields but it just keeps going and then it opens it really opens up over here look at this I mean it's just talk about space 
It's a 4x map, but it feels even bigger than a 4x map, I have to say. We go, look at that. All this, so you can see at the edges here, the peaks. Around here, you could cut fields right to the edges of these slopes, which would be really nice. And then over here... ...is some real open space. Look at that. It's just glorious. Glorious. And then down here, you'll recognise... ...the farm we stopped at. And then these fenced off areas that I was talking about before. Which really, uh, maybe lend themselves to a nice cattle farm. There you go, a field there, and a field there, fenced off. And we're heading back over to the farm. So here we are. You'll recognise this farm from our tour in the uh, truck before. And again, I'll fly up here. And then you can have a look at all of the space you've got available to you over here. Look at that. And you know what else is really nice about this map? The lighting's pretty spectacular as well. So there you go. Elk Mountain by Elk Mountain Modding. This is special. I implore you to go and check this map out. Even if you don't end up playing it, you've just got to check it out and just be impressed with the amount of effort and time that has gone into this. This has clearly been a labour of love and it really comes through in the map. So, there you go guys, these maps are getting better and better all of the time, I am so impressed with this, it is it's fantastic. So, from me for now, thank you very very much for watching, thank you very very much to CJ and Elk Mountain Modding for letting me do a little preview tour of this, keep an eye on their Facebook page and uh, you will find out very quickly when it goes live, but hopefully... Based on what I've seen today, it's pretty well polished and pretty well finished, so hopefully we'll not be waiting too long. But for now, from me, the Farm Sim Guy, thank you very, very much, and I will see you all again very soon. Bye for now.